Hi. Today we're going to talk about um, Hashimoto's and COVID. Okay. So we're going to take this from the perspective of what I'm observing, not from like I'm the expert of the universe or I don't have any access to grind here. So we're not going to get anything that I think is going to get me kicked off, to, <laughs> off of the off of lot off of the air or whatever it is that we're on here. So. Um, so COVID, so a lot of people are asking me, okay? A lot of people I call and they call me and they say, doc, so I, I, I have this and, and and I have an irritable bowel syndrome. I, I'm getting chronic pain, I'm getting joint pain. I, I, all the things that I treat, all the things. I got, I'm seem like I have this or that, migraine headaches and my lungs are a problem. And then I'll go through my normal consultation. And what I started to have happen um, not that, you know, two years ago <laughs> was, oh, and, I, and, and before we're done, I have, I have one more, I just have one more um, uh, question. I just got COVID. Could that, could that have anything to do with it? So I think the answer is yes. I don't think that's controversial at this time. I'm reading about long COVID all over the place. And, um, and, and, and so I think that my perspective is going to be more of maybe a kind of a, uh, uh, kind of a, a forecast of what I think you're going to hear. So what I'm seeing is this. I'm seeing, I've seen tons of people who got COVID and have developed chronic pain, chronic fatigue, chronic gut problems, chronic anxiety. Um, and, and it, you know, in the beginning, the thought process that I was going through is, wow, these people sound just like my regular patients who come in with uh, autoimmune problems and chronic anxiety and depression and chronic gut problems and irritable bowel syndrome. And I thought it's kind of interesting. I mean, the, the, and then I started seeing the, um, uh, I started seeing the articles in the, in, on, the, on the health sites. And I, I have an app where I, where I can access a bunch of health sites that I can kind of go through every day from different newspapers and different journals. And, and I do so, and I do so. And I started to look at the histories and they're going, oh my God, this long COVID, it's gonna be, we, we, is, is there such a thing? And that whole thing, that was a couple of years ago. I, again, I thought, man, that looks just like my patients. This sounds like, just like my patients. Well, a couple of years later, now people are actually saying, you know, this long COVID is here. It is long COVID. It's real. It's here to stay. And they're, it's interesting, typical of, of the medical industry or the medical research industry. They're taking every single symptom and they're trying to find one thing that is causing that symptom. But here's what I think is going on <laughs> based on what I'm seeing. Okay. So what I've seen, this is after bringing in patients, evaluating them, testing them and then treating them, okay? And I've had a, enough time to do whew, maybe 50 patients, which is a lot in my practice, you know, as a percentage of, of people who came in with, well, I had this happen, this happened, this happened, and it happened right after I got COVID. So here's what I've seen. I think what we're gonna see is the vast majority of these folks have developed autoimmune problems. And, and that may sound to you like um, it sounded to me when my mentors said uh, when we were uh, evaluating chronic fatigue, immunodeficiency disease patients years ago, um, it sounded to me like a very strange thing when they told me that all these people were going to have Hashimoto's, autoimmune diseases, all that type of stuff. And I thought, autoimmunity, nobody gets autoimmune, nobody gets Hashimoto's. Well, this is kind of, it might sound like this to you when I'm telling you about COVID because that's what I'm seeing. Now, I don't know if it's just my patient population. Okay, fair enough. I don't know if it's just my patient population that seeks me out because I do a lot of autoimmunity and a lot of chronic conditions. But what I see is they come in with all of it. They come in with the, the and, and, and no two per people are gonna be the same. Um, who's got the heart problems? Who got the myocarditis? Who's got the, who's got the anxiety? who has the irritable bowel syndrome, but what I'm seeing an awful lot is once you start to investigate this person's history later, um, you'll find out that they have a history of autoimmune conditions in their family. Um, since Hashimoto's is now considered the most common autoimmune condition in the world, 
and I've read articles in research magazines and journals that say it is now more prevalent than all of the other autoimmune conditions together. And since about 75% of my chronic pain patients have, uh, um, have tested positive for, for Hashimoto's, um, I see a lot of Hashimoto's being set off. I see a lot of people who had MS and they were in remission, and now they're not in remission. People who had rheumatoid arthritis, they were in remission, they weren't in remission. So what I'm seeing is as I take their history, I go back beyond when this happened and ask, what was your health history like beforehand? Maybe they had a thyroid problem that was diagnosed with hypothyroid, but now they've blown up and they have a classic autoimmune thyroid disease, and it's, it's affecting their gut, it's affecting their cerebellum, which can cause dizziness, vertigo, balance. Now they got gut problems, now they're developing food sensitivities. It seems to be the same pattern that we saw had occurred back when we were studying chronic fatigue, immunodeficiency disease, slash fibromyalgia, uh, for me 15 years ago, for some of my colleagues even longer than that. So. It, so at the very least, it would appear that if you have had COVID and you're looking at this and you have a suspicion or you've been diagnosed with long COVID and nobody knows what to do with you, it, I, it, well, I think it would be a good bet that you assume that you are in, if not a, an entire category of patients who are being triggered by a virus, and again, Viral triggers are very common for autoimmunity. There's several of them. There's, there's, there's herpes viruses, there's cytomegaloviruses, there's Epstein-Barr viruses. Bacterial infections can do it, Lyme can do it. There's just, you know, so, so, in, so these infections are already commonly known to set off immune responses and cause autoimmune problems in people who are genetically predisposed to it. So I would say, being a viral infection, seeing what I'm seeing, see their blood panels look autoimmune, their histories look autoimmune, everything looks autoimmune um, in the vast majority of these patients. Maybe not all of them, but the vast majority that walk in here. So I would say that if you are looking at this and, and, and bringing this up because you're like, ooh, Hashimoto's and COVID, and, and I think maybe something's going on with me. That's how I would pursue it. I would pursue it first as an autoimmune condition, especially if you look back in your history and you have had already suspicions of having autoimmunity beforehand, or if you look back in your history and your mother's got a thyroid problem and your aunt's got a thyroid problem and your grandmother's got a thyroid problem or your uncle's got MS or your aunt has lupus or something like that, and you have that genetics in your family and you've already had symptoms of maybe wondering like what's going on with me and then you hit COVID and now you're done. Okay, now it's just like everything is falling apart. Nobody knows what's wrong. You're on long COVID. You're one of the persons I'm reading these articles about whose life has become the way it's become. I think that your best bet is to assume that you probably have developed some sort of an autoimmune response. That's what I'm seeing, okay? I've seen other people come in here who, well, that's autoimmune. I was just gonna say have developed, uh, who have developed diabetes, but, uh, from COVID, but that's diabetes type one. Uh, I have seen other people who just seem to have blown up and gotten irritable bowel syndrome and maybe diabetes type two, and yet we tested them and they, and they didn't have antibodies for, for autoimmunity. And that doesn't necessarily mean they don't have autoimmunity, okay? But we did treat them for what they had and treated them as though they were autoimmune and seemed to be a good thing to do. So that's, what I'm seeing, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a question I get like, oh my God, every week. And, um, and, and, I, and I think this is real data. Again, you know, a lot of people out there are gonna go, well, you know, you're, you're a chiropractor or you're not in the research field. Well, I have friends in the research field. I mean, at Harvard, at Loma Linda University, at Bastyr University, at National College of Health Sciences and, and, and more, okay? But it's not that, it's that when you're a clinician, when you're in the field, you see things long before people in the research field even think about looking into it. Because you have to see it first <laughs> for it to get out there, for people to go, now maybe we should do some research on that. 
So I think it's legitimate to be discussing this with you. And it may not be a surprise for some of you. Some, some of you might say, I looked in this journal the other day, or I saw this in the LA Times, or I saw this in the Washington Post, or I saw this in the, in the Wall Street Journal's health sections or something like that. And it sounds just like what you're talking about. And yes, it, this is getting out there a little quicker for obvious reasons. This is, a, this is a front of the mind issue with millions of people getting it. And so it's come to the forefront much, much quicker than most things do. Um, for the for the medical profession to funnel you know billions of dollars in there to study a, 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 in, in research, so that to what I know to date uh, would be what I think you need to know as a potential uh, investigator or a potential patient uh, relative to um, COVID and uh, Hashimoto's.